Hi everybody, I have a nice uh, case I want to share with you. We can directly have a look into the panoramic x-ray before surgery. As you can see, the patient has a severe um, parodontal disease and we have to extract the tooth of the maxilla. And as you can see as well is uh, that we have a severe loss of bone, only a few millimeters of bone at the sinus floor. We planned to um, extract the tooth and to place implants in one procedure using allograft rings. You can see here it's directly after the tooth extraction of the um, anterior tooth. Of course, at first um, I release a mucoperiostal flap. First I started with um, external sinus lift on the right side. You can see here is a septum in the middle and I prepare with um, a big diamond uh, drill. Now I remove some bone chips from the lateral window and here you can see that I got a rupture of the Schneiderian membrane. When I have something like that I um, I make a little bit bigger fenestration to the sinus and when it's possible I try to suture the rupture of course with resorable sutures. It takes uh, some time to do that. We can hurry up a little bit. That's the second few, uh, suture and you can see um, there is a second dehiscence and I have to make a third suture, but then uh, we can go on uh, with the plan. Um, we have seen on the x-ray that it's only one millimeter of bone left to the sinus. So I use the allograft ring technique for primary stability for the implant. I cut the one centimeter or 10 millimeter long ring into two pieces of five millimeters and then I place the allograft ring into the sinus. Of course, uh, before I did the implant drilling in the uh, local bone, I place the allograft ring on top of the implant drill and then I drill or I insert the implant into the sinus of course, um, you only have to do this when you want to place an implant directly and uh, if you have only a few millimeters left and you can't get a primary stability to the implant without other techniques or with, uh, without this bone ring. When you can do an internal sinus lift or a sinus lift without bone rings, uh, it's better. But in this case, only one millimeter of bone was left. You can use the bone ring in the sinus without any bone substitute material surrounding it or you can put some cerebone or some other um, bone substitute material around it. There's one question. I use an, um, it's an, um, it's an Strauman implant 3.3 millimeters and you should place it one or two millimeters subcrestal. But if we only have one or two millimeters bone, I can't put it um, as deep as I want to, the implant shoulder. So there are two possibilities to solve this problem. Um, I add one or two millimeters of uh, particulated bone substitute material on top on the implant and then I place my fixation screw or membrane screw, you will see it later. This is possibility number one, so after a few months there will, have be, uh, there will be some bone on the implant shoulder. Possibility number two is that you place completely the implant and the ring into the sinus and then you place the um, membrane screw or fixation screw outside the sinus. Then the implant shoulder is one or mil two millimeters uh, inside the bone as well. Now we go on with the procedure. 
um, for the front. Um, at first you have to um, get the ideal implant position with your drill. Then I take the second drill for the 3.3 millimeters Trauman. And now I use the tree fine with a pin in the center. And the pin in the center normally follows the uh, primary uh, implant drilling. Here it's a little bit different because the pin isn't long enough to get into the hole of your first drill. So I have to, to um, fix it with the other hand. I go about five millimeters inside the bone. It depends on the defect. Then I remove some bony chips. And now comes the so-called planator, which smoothens the bottom of the ring bed. And now I place the five millimeter ring and I insert the implant. It was 3.3 bone level tapered and it's about 10 or 12 millimeters long. I place it about one or two millimeters in the bone ring. You can see it on the blue dots. And it's very stable. The same thing I do on the other side. First implant drilling in ideal implant position, then tree fine with a pin in the center, then planator, removing some bone chips. You can use them later. Then place the ring. So it's the second ring I used because the first one I have cut into two pieces. And as you can see, it fits very well. Then I place the third implant, one or two millimeters under the surface of the ring. And that's a picture. You can see um, the bone ring in the sinus. You can see the fixation screw and you see the two implants in the front surrounded by an aerograph ring. Now I removed the um, fixation screw on the first implant and I add some bone substitute material. It should be slowly or non-resorable bone substitute. And then I put the membrane screw on top, which gives a fixation of the bone substitute material. And of course, in the front of the maxilla, I fill up the gaps with um, bone substitute material. I placed some other implants on the left side uh, we don't have to watch it because it's always the same. Okay, you fill up everything that we get a smooth surface. Then we need some big membranes. In this surgery, it's the Yason membrane by Botus Company. Then I make some subperiostal sutures resorbable sutures for the fixation of the membrane and then comes the final suturing. This is the x-ray before surgery and here you can see two and a half hours or three hours later sinus lifting on both sides using allograft rings uh, and implants with bone rings in the front. Okay, now you can see the healing after uh, 20 days and that's it. We have to wait about six months and then comes the re-entry.